Okay, today's lesson is on solving two-step equations. Um, let's get started with a few things. We already have the prior knowledge uh, to master this objective based on what we've done with one-step equations, um, combining like terms, uh, things like that. So, whenever we are solving for a variable, solving for a variable, we have an equal to sign and we're trying to figure out what is the value of x or what is the value of a. We always ask ourselves the exact same question, and that's what's being done to my variable, or what's being done on the same side of the variable. Okay. Once you've asked yourself that question, you can begin to fill out kind of our do and our undo uh, t-chart okay, of we ask ourselves what's being done and how do we undo it. Okay. Now, here's a new thing that's a little bit different from one step, or in addition to one step equations. Okay. Before, when we had uh, problems with multiple operations, but there wasn't an equal to sign, the directions oftentimes said to simplify. Okay? And over here, if we look at this, this is not a new graphic organizer for us. Right? When we simplified, we started with grouping symbols, then went on to exponents, multiplication, division, and then addition and subtraction working left to right. This is a huge key point. When we are solving, okay, if you see in the directions that it says to solve, or if you have an equal to sign and you're solving for a variable. When we are solving for a variable, we use what we call reverse Jimdas. Make sure you get this key point down in your notes that we use reverse Jimdas for the undo. Okay? And we'll see what I mean by this in one second. But get this key point down. And if you need to pause it, make sure you pause it now. Okay. Now, the other awesome thing that we already know about equations, there is no excuse for getting these problems wrong. Right? We can substitute in our answer and evaluate it and see if we got the answer correct. Okay? If when we substitute in the number, okay, if when we substitute in the number, the two sides balance out. So like if we get something where it's like five equals five, okay? That tells us that whatever we plugged in for x or whatever the variable was, we just balance the equation. Okay? It is a solution to the problem. So these are kind of the steps for how we're going to solve two-step equations. Okay? Let's just hop right in and do an example. And again, if we just went too quick, pause it on the previous page, get some stuff down, and rewind it if you need to. Okay, so let's look at example number one. Go ahead and get this down in your notes. Okay, example number one. Again, we have a variable. We have an equal to sign. What this is simply saying, you guys, is that we're saying, okay, what value of m, okay, would make this left side of the equation equal 60? So we have to find out, again, what value of m will balance this left side out with 60 or make it equal to 60? And again, to do that, we ask ourselves our question, what's being done to the variable? Now, with this one, I always look and see, is there anything touching the variable? And if we look at this, we say, oh, yeah, there's a 7 touching it. Now, it's also really important to pay attention. What is the sign on that 7? Well, it's a positive 7. So this is where we start our do and our undo table. Okay, we ask ourselves, what's being done? Well, I have a positive 7 touching it. And again, I know touching means multiplication, so I'm multiplying by 7. <clears throat> what else is being done? What else is being done on the same side? Well, I already took care of this. I have a negative 17 hanging out over here with it. Again, we always look at the sign before the number. We never look at the sign after the number. Okay, so I am subtracting 17. Okay. Now, what are the inverse operations to, what's the inverse operation of multiplication? Eh, division. What's the, so I need to divide both sides by 7. What's the inverse operation of a negative number? Well, it's a positive number. Okay, so here's the first time we're going to use reverse Jim Dots. And again, get this down in your notes. So typically, we would do this, right? Multiplication, division, addition and subtraction, working left to right. That's simplifying, but now that we're solving, we're using reverse. And all we mean by reverse is we're starting at the bottom with addition and subtraction and working our way up. Okay? So if we look at our undo side, what would we do first? Would we add 17 to both sides 
or would we divide both sides by 7? Well, we look right here. That's really simple. We said we need to start with addition or subtraction. We are undoing things. Okay, so on both sides, I need to add. So again, I look right here at my undo side. I need to add 17 to both sides. And make sure you put plus. Show what operation you're doing. Okay, negative 17 plus 17 cancels. What's left? A positive 7m. Do I have to show this plus 7? No, because that just tells me it's a positive 7 that's being multiplied by m. Okay, I don't need, you know, if you want, you can put the plus sign right there, or it's showing that it's a positive. Okay, and then this side, 60 plus 17 will equal 77. Okay. Now, we already have, so we just finished that. What's left? Well, we said that we have to undo multiplication of 7 by dividing by 7. So again, whenever we uh, divide, I like to use a squiggly line. That's a personal preference. Divide both sides by 7. Whatever you do to one side, do the exact same thing to the other. 7 divided by or 7 over 7 will get me 1, which is what I want. I want a positive 1 in front of m equal to 77 divided by 7 is 11. Now, do I need to show this 1m is equal to 11? No, I can just show m is equal to 11. Now, before I circle that, I need to check my answer. Again, you are insane not to check your answer to see if you got it right. So let's plug it in. Negative 17. Again, all I'm going to do is substitute in my answer to make sure I got it correct. Okay, so I'm now saying that m, right, m is 11. Okay, and does that equal 60? And again, I'm just showing that I just substituted in that 11. Does that equal 60? That's what we're trying to figure out. If it does, we found the right answer. Okay, well, negative 17. 7 times 11 is 77, and that's equal to 60 maybe. And if you do this on your calculator, negative 17 plus 77 will definitely equal 60. This is how your checks should look where you keep simplifying so that you get a number. And if it better equal the number. If it doesn't, you need to go back and redo it because you made a mistake. Now that I know it's correct, I'm going to circle my final answer because I'm done with that one. Okay. Again, if you have questions or you need a second to finish notes or you want to really look at something, pause it now before we go on to the next page. Okay. All right, let's go on to example two. Okay, Example two, I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, I have one variable here, I have an equal to sign, so I'm trying to figure out what value of x, if I plug it in, will make this left side of the equation equal negative 6. I'm trying to balance out the equation. Okay, so I'm going to ask myself a very simple question. What is being done on the same side of my variable? Well, the variable is on the left-hand side, so I look at it. What's touching it? I see a 4 touching my variable. I know that touching means multiplication. So I'm multiplying by 4. What else is being done over here? Well, if you said this left side, you would say 4x minus 2. Well, you just said what else is being done. Minus 2. Right? Okay, so don't forget my doing my undo. So what's being done? How do I undo it? How do I, what's the inverse operation of multiplying by 4? Divide by 4. Okay, what's the inverse operation of subtraction? Addition of 2. Okay. Which one do I do first and why? Okay, I'm going to give you about 10 seconds. I want you writing down or just saying in your head, which one do I do first and why? Do I add 2 to both sides or do I divide both sides by 4? Take a second. Make sure you think about why. Okay. Hopefully you said that first we need to Add 2 to both sides. Again, we're using reverse gym dots. We start with addition and we start at the bottom. Start with addition and subtraction, then go on to multiplication and division. So make your upside down T. Our work should look the exact same. Okay? All right, go ahead and add 2 to both sides and then simplify. I'll give you a second to do that. Okay, so you should have added 2, added 2. Again, if you just waited on me to do that, 
you're not maximizing your learning. You need to do this stuff on your own. You know how to do this because we've done one step. Okay, this cancels. What's left? 4x is equal to negative 6 plus 2. If you do that on your calculator, it will equal negative 4. Okay? Do the next step. So we just finished the addition of 2. Do the next step. And again, your work should look exactly like mine does. But go ahead and do it, and then I'll show you how I did it. Okay, so we said we already have over here. We need to divide, divide both sides by four. Divide by four. Four over four cancels, leaving me with one x. I don't need to show that one x. I can just show x. Bring down the equal to sign. Negative four divided by positive four will give me negative one. Now, should we stop there, circle it, and say, "Cool, got it, good, move on"? Absolutely not. Check it to make sure you got it right. There's no excuse for getting these wrong on a quiz or test. None. Okay, so I'm just going to plug it in. I just said that x, and again, I'm looking at this x up here. I just said that x was negative 1. Make sure you use parentheses whenever you substitute in. Subtract 2. And our question is, does that equal, and it should, but does that equal negative 6? Okay, so you can just plug, if you want, you can just plug this part in on your calculator. So do 4 parentheses negative 1, close parentheses minus 2 hit equals, and you're going to find out that that does equal negative 6. Okay. Did they balance out? Yes, they did. I know that negative 1, if I plug it into this original equation, will balance out my equation. Okay. If you need more time to finish writing that, or to really stare at it and, and think about it and write down some questions if you didn't understand, pause the video now. Okay, if you're ready, let's go on to the next page. We have a few more examples. Okay, good. Starting getting into some fun ones now. Fractions. Don't be afraid of fractions. Okay? Um, I intentionally wrote the exact same problem because I'm going to show you two different ways of solving this. And then it can be up to you to decide which way you really prefer to show it. Okay? So the first way is we're just going to... Uh, just get started on it and ask yourself, what's being done to the variable? Okay, well, if I look, my variable's on the left-hand side. What's all being done? I have x over 4. I know that over 4 means division by 4. Okay, and you can see this. We're saying x divided by 4. What else is being done? Well, I have a positive 9 hanging out over here. And it's not a positive 9 because of this guy. It's a positive 9 because there's no sign in front of it, right? And if there's no sign there, I know it's a positive. Okay, so I have a positive 9. How do I undo these? I need to times both sides by 4. And then I need to subtract 9. Okay? So I want you guys to um, pause the video now and then go ahead and solve this showing the steps that we've just done. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and solve it. Okay, hopefully you paused it um, and you have it solved. Here's how our work should look. And again, double check your work with mine. If it doesn't, let me reverse it. If it doesn't look the exact same, then you need to pause it and get down the correct work, okay? So on both sides, I said I need to subtract 9, subtract 9. Okay, what's left? Well, that cancels. So I have x over 4 left, and that equals... 8 minus 9 would give me negative 1. Okay? All right. So we just subtracted 9 to both sides. And now what I need to do is, I already said, I need to multiply both sides by 4. Now, it's really, really important that you show your work the way I'm about to show you. We learned this with one step, um, but if your work is not the exact same, then you need to change it. Okay? So I need to multiply both sides by 4. Now, whenever I have a fraction, I like to put that fraction in parentheses. And then I'm going to multiply, because this side's a fraction, I'm going to multiply it by a fraction over here. Now, my question is, how do I get this 4 in the denominator to cancel? Well, we've already learned that if you have a 4 in the denominator, in order to get to cancel, we need a 4 in the numerator. And any number we can write over 1. 
Okay. Again, your work should look the exact same. So now, with a 4, oh, before I forget, if I multiply the left side by 4, I also need to multiply the right side by 4. Now, I don't show this one as a fraction because I know what negative 1 times 4 is. I don't need to show 4 over 1 on this right side. Okay. So now that I have a 4 on top and a 4 on bottom, that's going to cancel. And the reason why is because if you multiply those fractions, you'd end up with 4 on top, 4 on bottom. What's going to happen with those? Boom, they cancel. Okay. What's left over here? Well, we kind of have an x over 1, but do we need to show something over 1? No. We, so we can just show what's left. We have an x. And then that equals negative 1 times 4 would be negative 4. Okay. So then you can plug that in and check to see if it's right. Okay. So you have 9 plus negative 4 over 4. And does that equal, we always plug into our original equation, does that equal 8? And so on your calculator, just plug in this. Okay, just plug in 9 plus, and then you can do the fraction, negative 4, fraction 4, and you're going to find out it does, in fact, equal 8. So 8 equals 8. Checks out. Okay. Now, there's another way of doing this, and we're going to get the exact same answer. Okay. Here's the other way of doing it, and I, I really want you guys to understand both ways because it's really important as you get into more complex math. Okay. If we look at this one, before we start our doing our undo box, we should have noticed something, that we have a variable here. We have a variable without a number in front of it. Okay. What number goes in front of it? Write that in. Five seconds. You should have written in a one. Okay. Now, we can rewrite this. We can pull this fraction right here. We can pull this fraction out in front of x. So I can rewrite this, 9 plus, my fraction is 1 fourth x, and that equals 8. Okay. So before I do my, my doing my undo box, I should have seen, oh, there's a hidden one in front of x. How else could I write that? I could write it as 1 fourth with an x off to the side. Now let's fill in our doing our undo box. Okay. What is touching the variable x? Well, what's touching the variable x, and touching means multiplication, is 1 fourth. How do I undo multiplication? I'm going to divide by 1 fourth. Okay. Um, and then what else is being done? I have a positive, because there's, there's no sign, so I know it's a positive. I have a positive 9. How do I undo a positive 9? I subtract 9 from both sides. Okay. For sake of time, I'm going to walk us through that. Oh. I need to redo that. Oh, no, I don't. Because the first thing that I need to do to both sides is I need to subtract 9. So subtract 9, subtract 9, okay? And what's left? That cancels. 1 fourth x is equal to negative 1, okay? Now, I said I need to divide both sides by 1 fourth. So I like to, when I'm dividing fraction by fraction, I like to show this kind of big sideways bar, divide by 1 fourth. And then over here, you could show the fraction bar, but I like to just show it this way because this is actually what I'm going to punch in on my calculator. Okay. 1 fourth, any number over itself, we know is going to cancel, leaving me with just x. Okay. Do this on your calculator, and you're going to find out x is equal to negative 4. And what do you know? Okay. Negative 4, negative 4. We got the exact same value. Okay. Really quickly, for those of you curious, the reason why, okay, when you do this right here, when you do negative 1 divided by 1 fourth, how do you divide by fractions? Okay. You multiply by the reciprocal. So we would, and I can put this over 1. Again, any number we can write over 1. Okay. I multiply by what's the reciprocal of 1 fourth? Remember, we just flipped the numerator and denominator, so it would be 4 over 1. Okay, what's a negative times a positive? A negative, and then you have negative 1 times 4, so negative 4 over 1, which I know is just negative 4. Okay, that's why it works out the same. All right, again, if you need to pause it and get this down, 
Make sure you do it, but our final answer, no matter what way we solved it, was this way, was x equals negative 4. Again, pause it if you need to, otherwise we're going to move on. Okay, example 4. Um, we basically just went over this type of problem. So, um, why don't you guys fill out the do and the undo box quickly? Give you about 30 seconds. Fill out the do and the undo box. Okay, so we should have said, well, what's touching my A? It's a 3 over 2. Okay, how do I undo that multiplication? I need to divide by 3 over 2. Okay, and then um, what else is being done? I am subtracting 8. How do you undo that? You add 8. Which one do we do first? Do we add 8 or do we divide by 3 over 2? And make sure you're also thinking about why. Okay, you should have said to both sides we need to add 8. Why? Because we use reverse Jim does. We do addition and subtraction before we do multiplication and division. So add 8. Add 8. What's left? Well, I have 3 over 2. A off to the side is equal to um, 11 plus 8 would be 19. Okay? Go ahead and show the next step. Give you about 15 seconds to do the next step. Okay, so you should have said, oh, I need to divide both sides by 3 over 2. Divide by 3 over 2. Okay, cancels because they're the exact same thing. Leaving with A is equal to, and then 19 divided by 3 over 2. Um, I believe if you do it on your calculator, you're going to get 2 and 2 thirds. Now, we should write this several different ways. Okay, what would the improper fraction be for this? Another way of writing it, because we might see different answer choices on a test. Uh, 12, 24, 36, 38 over 3. As a reminder, I just multiplied 3 times 12 and then added 2. Always put it over the original denominator over 3. And another answer choice as a decimal would be 12.6 repeating. Okay. Now, if you're going to plug it in, you have to use one of these two exact numbers. Okay. So if you're going to plug it in and check it, do 3 over 2 times parentheses 12 and 2 thirds, close parentheses minus 8, and you'll get 11. Okay. Let's keep moving for sake of time. Um, I'm going to give you some practice problems now. Okay, um, here are some, some of the more basic practice problems for solving two-step equations. Um, I should say there's a second part to solving two-step equations with the more tricky problems and the more critical thinking two-step equation problems. Okay, so what you need to do is um, in a second you're going to hit pause, solve these equations, organize your work the exact same way we've taught you, and then what you can do is um, go to the next slide, look at the answers, and you've got to be honest with yourself. If you missed any, you need to correct your mistakes. Again, you know you're going to be held accountable for these and have to demonstrate mastery on quizzes and tests, and you want to master these, okay? So at this point, you can hit pause, and then when you finish, look at the next slide at the answers. Okay, so hopefully you should have finished by now. The answers to these are right here. Again, if you missed any, make sure you go back and correct your mistakes and explain exactly what you did wrong. 